Although I don't deserve you, I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. In a town brought low by its secrets sits a pair of friends alone together for the rest of time. I kind of want to go back to this route and try flight, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See ya, jerks! Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Yeah, yeah. This looks a bit like home. Sometimes I just feel empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. When it comes to worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. Luca Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah! I can't believe this! This is not something that I would have ever predicted. It can get awful cold in, out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Helps on the way. Where's Rollo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Luca shared a skeptical look. Well, do I? Aw, oh, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. Screw that guy to hell and back, dude. We should... I guess even in this world we should go to... The Valentine Factory? If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back I, uh, came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why'd you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rollo were doing chores of Rollo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Rolled his eyes Flaming chicken coop. No, you didn't. He stifled a chuckle. Yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare, but like I said, these were some primo fireworks, so I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rollo got grounded for months, which is why I needed to stash the evidence in Lalo. So I buried him under that tree. But when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found him and tossed him. triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out, it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. God, I'm struggling to wrap my head around that. Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. This is the point where I just fart into the walkie-talkie. Can we look in the perennial harvest office? No, I guess not. Well, that is where the fountain was, which is where Gran... Well, I guess in the new town is where Gran was, like, blowing up. Or whatever she was doing. Crooked. Just like this whole stinking place. Ooh! There is no spoon. Anything else I can uh, investigate while we're here? This is so wild! Whoa! <laughs> you don't want to walk across there, buddy. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. 
Echo! 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 Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. Why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. This is the source? It's a dang hole? How do we smash a hole? Uh-oh. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr, where's Rollo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drats, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. Is he going to push us in? He's totally going to push us in. Really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source, where they collect the unrefined, uh... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various... complications. Complications like us? You are a smart His face boy. contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. I like the word saccharin. If you don't have a page of words that you like and don't use very often or don't hear very often, then you're doing life wrong. You need to start doing that. Trust me. Some people are destined to strive for greatness. Others are simply obstacles along the way. It seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is that we all play our part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional, such as myself, embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Kurt snapped his fingers. Scene change! There, that's better. Deal with them. To Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop! Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialities. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I'm an exceptional liar. That's far enough. Piggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool! Call off your goons! After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can all head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What, like this? With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Ooh! Ah. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. <gasps> Iggy tried to twist away. But in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Uh-oh. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. Oh, God! His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. You reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face makes it worth it. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Long life? I'll have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas with Young. Wild look in his eye. Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. 
Wow, can you believe this guy? <laughs> Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Hi. Cat, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Look, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. Oh my god, Iggy. You aren't gonna kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. No, I'm just a no good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no. I felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. Calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh, I've got refuse and accept. I guess. Well, we'll probably end up trying both. So Luca had no choice. Uh, that acts actually makes me well up. Request. <laughs> he tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We, we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. What if Sharper Valentine's still alive? A swarm of and in charge. Overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. <sighs> I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I knew that, but I just didn't... I just didn't want to do it the first time. Oh. <sighs> choice but to accept Iggy's it's request. very on brand for this type of like again Spielberg-esque kid adventure thing for the bully to have his redemption arc and then snuff it as his fingers slowly gave up he met eyes with Iggy good what about Tish what's Tish gonna do the two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness oh, the music I'll have a goodbye, Iggy. I, I mean, that's got to have... Oh, God, that's made me so emotional. Luca, you should really step back. I was gonna say that's got to have done something because Kerr was so worried about uh, Iggy dropping the fireworks down the hole. What? Quickly. <gasps> Ooh. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before Perennial Harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest Liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. It is a time thing! But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk think the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the whole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder what to I shudder to think what would have happened in that we case. Have some idea what that would look like. Yeah. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. 
If you know all of this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn, you are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. Revenge served cold, <laughs> second time's a charm? <gasps> Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. I know, no, right? I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Too Let's right. go back and find something more definitive. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Okay. Interesting. I still kind of want to go back here and try Tickle just to see what happens. I mean, why not, right? We've got the Chronicle. We can go back whenever we want. Why not? Well, time to bust out the Tickles. Hey, Tish. Want to see something cool? Yup. Yeah. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. <laughs> what the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yup. Hi, yup. Hi, yup. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Yup, 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 yup. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Hi, yup. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. His eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. <gasps> oh, good. The splash hit back instead. Whoa. What a little creep. Uh, back. I think you got a little. Ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. At least it was only in her hair. Oh, that's cool! You look awesome, Beck. Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh God. <laughs> um. Chapter four. The best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck. And somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. Okay. So we carry on the uh, Rollo is missing storyline. But this time Iggy is not uh, been transformed. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with grey hair just run past us in a panic? And Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rollo. Luca, I need you to start telling me Roxy's the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rollo and I just weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just... Wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rollo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rollo shows up. 
Sound like a plan? Hugo wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than Looking normal. Into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place give me, gives me the willies. <sighs> okay. Hey, Jace. Joey? That's Joey. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Sorry. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rollo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rollo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rollo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy, if there's something you know. Something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Or maybe not. Yesterday, Rollo and I were messing around at the old Valentine Mr. warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rollo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. I think this was a huge mistake, Luca. Why did you have to... I tried, Luca. God knows I try to keep you safe. to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down Fuck, I knew this was a mistake! But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? Look at his eyes! We were all so close, so close to being done with this. shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Oh my god, that's why there's a phone booth that nobody uses. Shit. Pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. Yeah. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting at gravity's whim. Oh he my god. And pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Um. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. Oh my god. The end. Wow, Mr. Nuncreed is way more involved than I thought. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, so at some point we're going to be able to see something else. I think we're, at some point we're going to... We're going to be able to use a charm that means that we can see that he's not a safe person to talk to. Which was kind of obvious, but not enough. Okay, back to the three amigos together, which I feel like this is going to be the main storyline that we need the charms for to get to the, the sort of real, the good end. It's time to do good cop, hard cop. <laughs> Classic good cop, hard cop. 
I love it. Run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. <laughs> Brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. He's still got his hat on, I forgot. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver! He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. Finally! He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. Uh, what in the, the world? wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Uh, Ooh, uh, who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here, punk. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweat. The doubtful expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. We can do this my way, or... Well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. I love you, Rollo. He slammed the table again. Now dance! Uh, uh, uh. What? I don't Mr. even- Oliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. Uh, 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 You've tied me down, how on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk! Spill the beans! What are you doing poking around this house? I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything's ready. Oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran. Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, huh? Blow up the festival? Good lord! He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you got it all wrong! Where is she now? She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's where- His voice faded to a whisper. Oh, that map might have been of the original town. The town began, where it all began. What is Operation Spark With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Oh. Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rollo. I think you went a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we better not push Mr. Tolliver any farther. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the History Museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library? If there's any information about this source thing, Cardo can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. <laughs> hey, Cardo. Uh, we need some information that is not about bees. This is a dang nice library. Thanks, we work hard on it. Aren't you a little young to be a librarian? Oh, uh, Cardo hung out here so much they essentially gave him a set of keys. I just keep an eye on the place for Ms. Novak sometimes. They got you working for free? It's quiet and I get access to all the books I can read? What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? We need a favor. I already told you in Rollo, I can't put you any higher on the wait list for the next Hank Atomic. And if you're here with more candy, I'll have you know that I can't be bought. Call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. Now you're speaking my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing, we sort of don't know. What do you got on the history of the town? Hmm. There's the county record archives. What's in those? Births, deaths, newspaper clippings, stuff like that. Pretty boring reading, but they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great, we'll start there. Chapter 8 Six feet under, three towns over. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. We gotta get in that... uh, secret room. Explosives. Messages hidden in jam. 
dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. I mean, I know that it then outs them, and Gran would probably just... You'd end up in a locked basement situation, but the ideal thing would be if Gran could just tell us what was going on. map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. Mm. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. So Gran must have been going for blowing up the source, rather than blowing up the Town Square and the new town. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are going to pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm gonna end up in one of those asinine death records. Rollo Carter lived a full and wonderful life, till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Rollo shut his book with an assertive nod. If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring county records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries Rollo myself. Under his breath. You're a county record. Really? That's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be the footnote in history. Just like... Slammed her finger down on the open page before Glenn... Oops. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute Something and... Something tickled the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name back? In the obit? Jay Hartford. From the Brookville Tribune 20 years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford. That's my grand's name, Juniper Hartford. 